remember dead baby jokes? You thought they were really funny. What if those dead babies came back from the dead and were crying all over your house, inside your baby monitor, in the middle of the night? They've been crying in that exact crib for the past 60 years. All right, moms and dads, let's grab a blanket, turn off your lights, and put your babies to sleep first. Because this is going to be six true baby ghost stories from the internet. Hold them close. The Crying Baby It was 2002. I was 16 at the time. And we had just moved to a new house in George, South Africa. It was a lovely house with a big shady garden, and the first couple of months everything was fine, with no sign of any activities to my relief, as all our other previous houses had other tenants. One Sunday, we had unexpected guests that slept over and left early the Monday morning. That Monday afternoon, when my mother picked me up from school, she told me that what a good laugh she got out of my dad the previous night. He told her that he heard a baby crying, and every time he got to the room, it was emanating from it. It would die down and start somewhere else in the house. She was sure it must have been the toddler of the people who stayed over the previous night. Naturally, I was scared out of my wits, and when the evening grew closer, I was terrified. I didn't get much sleep that night, but nothing happened. And I told myself, my mom was right. My dad had just imagined it. The following evening, my best friend at the time was sleeping over. It was past midnight when I woke up from a baby's crying. I immediately woke my friend up and asked if she had heard it too. We tried to tell ourselves that it was just the cats making a racket at, as it was that time of year. But the crying grew louder and to our horror... A woman's voice joined in trying to lull the baby with a very eerie la la la. We were both too scared to get out of bed. I desperately wanted to switch on the light and call my dad, but I just couldn't pluck up the courage to do it. Neither could my friend. The door was slightly ajar and we were afraid of what we would find on the other side of it. The crying would stop for short intervals, but then start up again worse than before. When the crying got too much, we started calling my dad, half hysterically, I must add. I still don't know how my parents got to my room so fast. My dad immediately knew what was wrong. I remember my mom still asked me to close the windows as it was freezing in my room, but I didn't have any open. My father said a prayer, and we ended up sleeping in my parents' room for the rest of the night. I will wake up in cold sweat for weeks to come after that. Needless to say, I still get the chills when I think back to that night. The only explanation that we could come up with was that my room must have been a nursery, and a baby probably died there. The Perfect Baby In 2002, we bought our first home. My son was born that May. He was the perfect baby. Never cried, always took two hour long naps and just never fussed. On several occasions after putting him to bed, I would either hear from the other room or be awakened by a baby crying. At times, it was my son, but on many, many occasions, we would check on him and nothing. After months of this, we would just stand and watch him after hearing the crying and he never made a sound. Even after walking back into the other room, the crying would start again. 
It got to a point after the first year where we just started ignoring it and the crying would almost become faint. I would still pause the TV every now and then though and just listen. It still puzzles me and though it creeped us out in the beginning, we just accepted that something must have happened in our home and there's nothing we can do about it. My son is 11 now and the crying hasn't happened in years. What's scary is that for the last six years, I've had the most vivid reoccurring nightmares that something is in my room hovering over me as I wake. And then I levitate off the bed, the dark figure grabs me and I struggle with no strength at all, and I'm almost paralyzed. I immediately, in every instance, start reciting the Lord's Prayer in its entirety over and over and completely feel myself trying to sit up and open my eyes. Then I wake, sweating and scared out of my mind. The only changes in this nightmare is sometimes I levitate to the ceiling and do not see but feel the presence, and sometimes the figure grabs me into the air and slowly pushes me against the wall. I will always recite the Lord's Prayer over and over though. I've had this happen to me over 30 times, and at times for days in a row or for a month, then nothing for another month. It started after I stopped smoking herbs, since I would smoke once in a while when I'm going through really stressful times, and days after I will 7 out of 10 have this nightmare, but also when I have not smoked either. Anyone have any idea if this is more than a dream? Not trying to thread. Sorry. Crying Baby My story takes place in the late 60s, near Los Angeles, California. I was 9 years old at the time. My older sister, who was 16 years older than me, and her husband had just had their first child. They rented and moved into a two-bedroom house in the suburbs of LA. At the time, I lived with my mom and stepfather in a different suburb in the same area. We went to my sister's house for a visit one Saturday for our barbecue. After supper, we were all in the living room talking. The baby was asleep in the nursery room. We heard him start crying. And my mom got up to go get him and my sister told her it was not him that was crying. We were all surprised at that statement. And when my mom asked her what she meant, she said that they quite often heard a baby crying in the house that was not their son. Mom, not knowing what to think, went into the bedroom and found their grandson sleeping peacefully. The crying stopped just before she walked into the room. When she came out, my sister and her husband told us about the other abnormalities that had been happening in their new home. These are the incidents I remember, but no, there are more I don't recall. There was a swinging door between the kitchen and the dining room that would stay closed half of the time and wouldn't stay open the rest of the time. Sometimes it would be open all the way into the dining room and would stay that way. The rest of the time, it wouldn't stay open. They actually put phone books or other heavy items to prop it open and would come back later to find it closed again. From the living room, they had a clear view into the dining room and could see the door slowly close, moving the stop as it closed. My sister and her husband both worked day shifts, so they would get up early in the morning. They were both coffee drinkers. They would pre-set up the coffee pot at night, so all they had to do was turn on the burner under it in the morning. It was the late 60s. <laughs> they had a gas stove. Several mornings they woke up to find the coffee was made hot. It had been brewed before they woke up. 
this didn't happen regularly, just occasionally. They also would hear talking at different times of the day and night, what seemed like two people talking in very low tones. They were never able to hear what was said, just what sounded like muttering in the next room. That would stop when they went to investigate. They lived in the house for a couple months and moved out. They couldn't take the going-ons there any longer. Ghost Baby A little backstory before I begin. This is a story my grandma used to tell me often. It was always a treat for my brother and I to hear, as well as some of our friends. The story takes place when my uncle was a baby. He's now in his 40s. It was my grandma and grandpa's first home. They live in Ohio, an old farmhouse on ground they sold to the country to build suburbs on. The house is no longer standing. Although I think it was torn down long before the suburbs were put up, which was only five or so years ago, maybe less. I've never seen the old farmhouse, so it was probably torn down before my lifetime. My grandparents never used the upstairs in their house. They might have used it for storage purposes, but that would have been it. They covered the stair door with a sheet and there were inches upon inches of dust covering the floors and stairs. My uncle was under a year old and could not walk at this time. He was sleeping one day, and my grandma either heard or needed something from upstairs and needed to go up the steps. She pulled back the curtain and saw a set of baby footprints and handprints going up, but not coming back down. My mom is younger than my uncle and wasn't alive at this point, so it couldn't have been her. There were no other children in the house besides my uncle who, like I said, could not walk or hardly crawl. They also didn't have any pets or animal problems like raccoons, as far as I know. They've never had another encounter with the paranormal. <laughs> but Ghost Baby was... Always a family favorite story. Baby crying? Or was it her? This is my first story. I am not much of a writer though, but very excited to write down my first experience. So I live in Mumbai and had this experience near my balcony. I stay in a society which is like 60 years ago. I stay on the first floor and I am the only one who sleeps on the balcony. The windows of my balcony is very wide. And this place, being very old, is filled with huge trees which darkens the place more at night. And it looks all very creepy. I would also like to mention that there is a huge cemetery opposite to my balcony. It's more than 200 years old, and it's so near that I can even see the walls of the cemetery through my window. I now start my experience which I had some months back, but first I ought to tell you a small story about a gate, which is just under my balcony. This can later help you all relate the story to my experience. We moved here in 2000. Our neighbor visited us once and she just told us a small story about that very gate. She told us that they moved in this building. In 1990, and one night, she was waiting for her husband to come home from the office. At around 12.30 a.m., 
She saw him coming and entering the building through the gate, so she opened the door of her house and was standing near it to welcome him. As he passed the gate and was entering the building, he heard a baby crying. He ignored it and walked upstairs. He then reached the passage of his floor and then he heard again that baby crying. He wondered how could a baby be near the gate all of a sudden when he neither saw a baby or anyone else when he entered. He decided to go down again, but his wife pulled him in saying it was too late and he shouldn't worry. As soon as she pulled him in, the sound of the baby cry transformed into a wicked laugh of a lady. According to my neighbor, the laugh was very loud and a human can never laugh so loudly. They both got so terrified and my neighbor's husband suffered from fever for over a week. Later, his friend told him that there's a woman ghost who roams on this road. This road is between my balcony and the cemetery. And this woman cries like a baby. And the one who comes near the gate to check, she kills the person. And that person's body is never found again. Now for my experience. It was March 2014, and I had my test from school going on, and I had to study. So I decided to get up at 4.30 a.m. I set the alarm, and I slept. My bed is adjacent to the balcony window. At 4.30 a.m., the alarm rang and I stopped it and was just lying on the bed for a while. And that's when I heard a baby crying. I don't know why, but I didn't get up to find out what was wrong or something in me stopped me from getting up. That sound came again for the second time. I could easily navigate that the sound was coming from the gate under my balcony but I didn't get up. When the sound came for the third time, I got up very scared and started chanting God's name. I later gathered courage and started studying and forgot about the incident for a while. I suddenly recollected the story told to us by our neighbor and decided to get up the next day at 4.30 a.m. again to check what was going on. As decided, the alarm rang, and I was waiting for that noise, that baby crying again. But this time it didn't. I waited until 4.40, but no noise was heard by me. I, I started thinking it might have just been my imagination then last night. I decided to sleep again. But I couldn't sleep and was just thinking about last night's incident, and all of a sudden... The alarm rang again. It was 4.50 and that's when I got very scared because I clearly remember that I had stopped the alarm earlier and it wasn't on snooze. I never put my alarm on snooze. How could the alarm ring on its own? This question still troubles me. Is that woman still there? Almost 20 years later. Thank you for reading my story, and sorry if I messed it up a bit. All views are welcome. Unborn baby still follows me. Hi. I have two kids. A daughter that's five and a son that's two. I'll call them A and L for short. Before I got pregnant with my daughter, I suffered a miscarriage. I was about a couple months along, very sad. I got real depressed. Then I found out I was pregnant with my daughter, A. Nothing really started to happen until after I had my son, L. They're three years apart, 
So let's say it's been about six years. Six years since my miscarriage. After I had my son, L, weird things started happening around my house. Sometimes I would hear a child, a child say, Mama, Mama, in a whisper. Sometimes when the house was quiet, I could hear a child running in the hall, when in fact I know they were sleeping. This was, although my miscarriage happened in a different place, it's not the same house, I still started to hear a baby crying. I thought it was my baby, so I would rush to check on him, but he would be sound asleep, practically snoring. I started to think, why at that moment did my baby that I lost started reaching out to me? It was because it was a boy. And that's why I didn't hear anything with my daughter, only with my son. I also felt as though a little person would fall asleep in my arms, touch my hand, and kiss my cheek. This was when my babies were barely born. It stopped for a while until now, 2014. I was driving, and my kids were in the back. All of a sudden, I hear someone whispering, but I can't understand what they were saying. I thought it was my daughter trying to tell me something, so I asked her what it is. She, she says she didn't say anything, so I brushed it off, but I kept hearing something that I heard someone, a child, say, Mama. <laughs> is my child trying to communicate with me? This makes me so sad to hear my baby. He's so grown up now. I can hear his laughter and tiny voice.